Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today's video we're talking about sound deadening <laughs> and all the different types that are out there to be honest. Um, well no, we're not going to talk about all the different types that are out there because we've been here for months. <coughs> Excuse me, a bit of Covid there, sneaking out. These are the types that we use, myself and my brother. So for the majority of the work that we do we would use this and we call it dodo matting but there's lots of companies out there with different names it's basically the same product you know it's a bitumen based product self adhesive it's foil lined and this gives you a little bit of uh, insulation value as well but the one thing to be careful is when you cut it it does become sharp so always wear your gloves when you use that tried and tested this we've used this on nearly every vehicle that we do we might buy from different different manufacturers but it's basically the same product the principle is you peel the backing off stick it to where you want to reduce the resonance in the panel and uh, you rub it with a roller until these little shapes are missing aren't there anymore or the little domes depending on which product you use little domes are gone or you can faintly see them so that's one we use we use quite a lot we also use this this is thermo liner basically it's a open cell foam and it's uh, lined with a foil covering again self adhesive very flexible but you do have to cut this to fit it into some of the shapes this stuff here you can you can work it in to a lot of different shapes and this stuff here this is basically soundproofing that we use on the floors um, we'd, we'd cover nearly every van floor with soundproofing just for when you're walking on it um, for road noise as well we don't usually put sound ending panels on the floor we stick this stuff and that usually goes underneath your uh, reply floor but <coughs> a lot of people ask question if you're insulating it why are you spending money on this product why are you adding additional weight this dodo matting that we use is 50% of the weight of the original product you know it, it's it's a lot lighter it's only two mil thick and that's probably where you've you're saving your weight but the fact are this stuff here works works really well same as a thermal liner I would still use insulation you'll see in some of the videos that I do in the future where we use this matting on the bulkhead behind the bulkhead and we then put a vapor barrier over the top of it and that's that was all just for sound soundproofing sound deadening um, the panel already has um, some of this on it as well so you'll be the question is why have you put that on and that on well, basically, when it's raining, a lot of the noise that you're going to get is going to come from your roof, it's going to come from your front panels, and if you can live with that drumming, that's fine, I can't. So, I've gone a little bit further than a lot of people will, but for good reason, and it, it is because I want to sleep soundly at night. You're never going to get away from rain on van roofs, but you can, you can try and reduce it as much as possible. So, during this van build, I, I use this vehicle. I will drive it round and take it on road trips to Carlisle and Penrith and places like that which are 30 to 40 miles away from where I live to see how the van behaves, to see if there's any changes in how it behaves while I'm doing the work. So if I've installed something, does it rattle, does it squeak? Because when you finish the job it's a lot harder to get rid of them little, little squeaks and, and rattles and stuff like that. So once we put the sound deadening in and we started putting parts into this vehicle we noticed that we were still getting quite a lot of noise but it's all coming from the front end now. So I haven't done the doors yet, the doors are still to sound deaden and insulate which we'll be using the dodo matting and the thermal liner and we may even cover the backs of the door with a vapour barrier so there's no, so we're reducing the thermal bridge in there. We might even stuff some insulation up inside the door pillars and stuff and them sort of areas 
because um, if, you, if you get thermal bridging on your door frames you'll notice it really easily you'll get water droplets gathering and that's your thermal bridging that means that hot air is, cold, is hot moist air is making contact with cold steel and that's what you want to avoid you definitely want to avoid it behind anywhere that's closed up because it doesn't evaporate it'll just keep doing it and doing it and doing it and in the end it'll start corroding so we've got a little bit of work to do on the door still and we've decided that we're going to pull the mats back the carpets back um, in the front of the van and we're going to go up behind the bulkhead as well so we've got sound deadening in the engine bay we're actually going to put some more sound deadening in the cabin so we'll put dodo mat in and again probably um, some of this soundproofing product this is uh, what it's designed for so yeah we'll cover them in another video though guarantee you that when you first decided that you were going to convert a van you'd never even consider that you'd have to install soundproofing. And basically that's what sound deadening is. It takes the resonance out of the vehicle, it takes the road noise away. It doesn't get rid of it all by no means but it takes the majority of it out. It makes you drive more comfortable. Once you remove that bulkhead when you drive around in your van you will notice how much noisier it gets. A lot of people these days aren't removing the bulkhead but they're still sound dead in the van because when you're lying in there at night and it's blowing a hooli outside and the rain's banging off the roof your sound deadening along with your insulation will absorb the majority of the noise that's generated. The product I'm using today is very similar to door door matting. Um, it's a self-adhesive bitumen product with, a, with an aluminium foil outer that can get quite sharp. I've taken several measurements of the areas that I want to cover and basically just averaged them. I'm going to make a number of uniformed pieces and just apply them. It doesn't have to be exact. All you want to do is cover the majority of the panel and when you've got a fold you don't really need to put any on the fold but if it's a, a small area or a tight area it doesn't matter if, if you go over this fold body line or, or crease in the, in the, in the panel. It's warm today so as I'm sticking these on and rolling them some of them are lifting off um, so it's a constant battle throughout the day but once, once they've had a good roller in, they stick down and they stay in place. But you can see there, there's some little bubbles um, appearing. But that's, that's just down to the panels warming up through the day. By the end of the day, everything was stuck down and I didn't have to do any more rolling. And I was glad of that because my arm was hanging off by the end of the day. And now for the complicated stuff. Take the backing off, find the place where you want to put it, and whack it on. Give it a bit of a roller, get rid of all the bubbles, smooth down the edges, and repeat about 300 times, I think. <laughs> it is that easy. For those of you that missed it the first time, here we go again. Peel the backing off, discard on the floor, find a place where you'd like to put it, whack it on, roll out all the bubbles and smooth off the edges. And repeat 299 times now I think. So It is really that simple.
When you come to a panel that has a fold in it, I always put a fold in the sound deadening and I would start there. I would work that into the crease on the body line and then just roll a, the rest of the dado matting in, working away from that crease. It's not any harder than anywhere else, but I've seen some people get stuck with bubbles and, and things like that, and they try and work them out and end up just working creases into the into the matting, which doesn't really matter, but if you're looking for a tidy job, this is the way to do it. For the bigger areas, you just need bigger bits of matting, and that is all. That's the only difference. Same with your doors, with braces in. Just put a piece below and a piece above, and it will uh, it will do its job. When it comes to doing my wheel arches, I try and do them with one piece. Um, and this is because I usually end up covering them with, with carpet material. Um, so what I, what I normally do, I'll cut enough to cover the wheel arch, I'll offer it up, and where the bends are and the folds are in the bodywork, I will then score the back of the sound deadening adhesive strip, just so I can remove the bits that I want to work on don't want my sound deadening to stick together so I'll remove these pieces and this will allow me to work on this section and for now that, that's all I want to do so once they're removed I just offer the material up flick it into place and start to work the material into the shape of the wheel arch again start at the bottom work my way up it's a little bit harder than, uh, than the flat panels but you know if you see a bubble coming don't don't just persevere because that will end up as a fold in your material so if you can either work it out or spend a bit of time working it in Once you've got the rough shape, you need to start putting a couple of cuts in. And this is just to relieve the material. If you carried on, you would end up putting folds into it. So what we do is we work the next part, the round part of the wheel arch in. And once we've got that shape roughed, we'll trim it, remove the excess. Don't throw them away because you can use that elsewhere on the bodywork. Like I say, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be pretty this material it costs you money so you might as well get value for money so I keep all my little off cuts some bits I will discard you know, a bit like that I'll throw away but this bigger piece I'll find a use for it somewhere I maybe put it on several different pieces but I'll definitely not throw it away too tight When you get to this point, I would suggest folding the sound ending back to get a, a line where you need to cut it, because we're taking this piece out. So get it so it's got a slight overlap, fold it over, that'll leave a mark in the material, and then you can cut it with your blade. Again, I'm going to save that piece and use it elsewhere. It doesn't matter if you tear the material, I've torn it there, but I'm not bothered because once I've worked everything in, it'll amalgamate back together and it'll make a, a nice little finish. So I keep rubbing this till it's nylon smooth um, and when I trim it with carpet you can't see any of this. So I made a little mis mis bit of a mistake there, there was some, some of the backing got stuck 
in between where I was working. So I've had to remove that. And that's that's what them little bit of creases are. But again, when it's finished, you'll never notice that I've done this. So again, I just keep working it in and trim out what I need to trim out. And the job looks great when I'm done. So that's it, job done. I did have to go around a couple of times with the uh, with the roller. There was a couple of pieces on the roof that I'd missed. So I went around, collected them, give everything a good going over again. And I think it was just the heat to be honest. It was such a warm day when I did this. I think it made the sound didn't expand and when it's when it was hot and pliable it just started coming away a little bit. Once I'd rolled it and went back to it a couple of days later, there was nothing wrong with it. If you've enjoyed today's video, please click like. And if you like the content that we're producing, please subscribe and think about clicking the notification bell so you never miss another video. Please leave any comments, even if it's just about my beard, you know, what you think. But uh, we love, we love hear from, hearing from you and we'll reply to everyone. Thanks ever so much. See you again.